What are you drinking? Well, I was going to drink this Tom Green beer, mm -hmm. but it's all washed up. Uh... <laughs> what are we watching today, Mike? Uh, today, Jack, we're going to watch, let's see, we have Horror, sci-fi, or action? Ooh. I'll let you pick, Jack. I think we, I, th I think we, I think we should, yeah. I was thinking that we could go for some sci-fi. All right. Let's move the skull. And let's just take the first three. Perfect. Right off the shelf Easy peasy. Here. What's up first, Jack? Is Alienator. An android hunter from outer space is about to create hell on Earth. Alienator, in deep space, the deadliest animal is still women. What? A woman. Oh. It's still woman. In deep space, the deadliest animal is still woman. Okay, so it is, it is confirmed that it's a, it's a woman. This is a woman. Yeah. Whoa, wrestler. That, that has to be a wrestler. <laughs> Easy way to open a door, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Did I miss excitement? Not no. really. It's a futuristic fight to the finish when the commander of a space station prison takes on galactic arch-villain Cole. Yeah, this is based on a true story? Yeah, I, you know, with like Android Hunter from Outer Space, the arm thing, I think this might have taken some cue from the Metroid video game series. Oh, okay. You're a hunter and you got a little arm gun. Uh, when Cole escapes on the verge of his execution, the commander has no choice but to unleash the Alienator. Cole's shuttle crash lands on Earth and the injured alien is befriended by Armstrong. What's Cole's last name? No. Is it Slaw? Oh! Problems? Don't ever talk to me, scum! I don't know, wall should. <laughs> this is very secure. The most secure prison! Did they just, this is just yeah. like a garage yeah. somewhere. It is. Yeah. They film this in a storage unit. Yeah. yeah. That, that's the, like, you can see like the light <laughs> in the wall behind. That's amazing. I love it. Uh, Sergeant Cole Linoscopy uh, lands on Earth. Did you just, you pulled that out of your ass, didn't you? That was a great joke, Mike. That was really good. But the alienator is hot on his trail. She's determined to capture her prey, even if it means blowing away everything and everyone that gets in her way. What escaped? Something from a space prison? Cole. Cole is the guy who escaped from the space prison. Cole? Okay. So Cole starts off as the bad guy, the alienator is the good guy capturing the bad guy, but then she goes crazy on Earth. All right, well, it sounds like a little bit of Terminator, a little bit uh, uh, Critters, a little I bit think critters. of Critters, yeah. yeah, and a little bit uh, Gene Simmons. Oh, they damaged her gun. Oh! Well, uh, now, she, now she's no longer an effective assassin. <laughs> oh, oh, that's oh, all she's got. It. Oh. It literally is just it's a gun. Like we jiggle this wire. Is this an outtake? <laughs> <laughs> What's next, Mike? Well, let's see. It's a DVD. Ooh. Uh, Alien from the Deep. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, it looks like a predator with a lobster claw. This, this, uh, oh God, there's a ton of words on the back. I know reading isn't your strong suit. Uh, somewhere deep in the jungle, a chemical corporation dumps tons of toxic wastes in a still active volcano. Well, this is off to a great start. <laughs> Oh. Just 
Aww. 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 Fortunately not. You see, most of the population has moved to other <laughs> It's like the exact same angle as the last time they showed it. Two environmentalists try to expose these illegal ways of getting rid of hugely dangerous waste. But they get caught by vigilantes working for the company. Ooh. Okay. How does it, a volcano has nothing to do with the deep? This is an underwater volcano. There would be a lot of effort to dump toxic waste in an underwater volcano. The toxic goo starts at the magma, yeah. but it goes all the way down. To come to think of it, inside a volcano, like an active volcano, is a great way to get rid of toxic waste. Probably not. I think it's some kind of claw kernel. What? What? <laughs> Did that come through the TV? I, I don't know what happened. <laughs> what? Put him out of this mission. Oh, little bitties. Oh, oh, okay, okay. This, you didn't think this through. Uh, yay! The super hot Maria Guila Cavelli manages to escape, and she is savaged by a snake farmer who lives alone in the jungle. So, so one of the hippies who tried to protect the volcano gets raped by a snake farmer. Yes. It's great, it's great. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, a completely different uh, connotation here. I, I Did I say savaged? You said savaged. Okay, saved. <laughs> so I was wondering why they would work together to bring down the company after she was savaged by him, but I, I misread saved. That, yeah, very so, different. So, yeah, okay. Very different. So she's saved by a snake farmer. Great. Uh, together they try to bring down the company, but it's too late. Years of chemical poisoning have spawned a deadly monster that has set out to exact revenge on the humans that have unknowingly brought him to life. Now, I don't know how radiation creates that, but I think that's what they're saying. Would you want to bet that this thing does not appear in the film at all? That this is just some stupid cover, this, much much like Rotor. This robot creature appears yeah, nowhere. Yeah, it's just going to be a guy in like a rubber suit that looks terrible. I mean, I would kind of love that. No, that does not appear in the movie. Is would be my guess. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that as well. Because like I get the the lobster thing, right? Because it's like radiation goes into the ocean yeah. that makes mutant lobsters. But then why is it a robot lobster? Oh, make a run for it. Robot go. Be careful. Oh, what is that? Stand up? Yeah. yeah. It's got a crane because his legs are just kind of dangling. Yeah, sure. Move back! <laughs> 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 oh, no, no! <laughs> Alien from the Deep is one of the most beloved Italian ripoffs. A wildly entertaining ride, the movie is an inventive crossover where lots of different genres and styles are mixed. A ripoff of what? I don't know. Loads of gore in action, plenty of bloody shootouts, a hugely entertaining monster, the infamous, quote, big claw. So there's at least a claw. Yeah. And some very titillating moments, courtesy of stunning Miss Cavalli. What more could you ask for? All you need now is. Oh, don't touch me, you snake squeezer. You're. <laughs> 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 What's next? Next on our list is Hands of Steel. You know what's weird is like all the movies have uh, like a thing on their arm. That's and right. I, I know we kind of chose these just at random, just like the first three. They were the first three on the shelf, yeah. And But they all have things on their arm. So this is the sci-fi things on your arm best of the worst. It's a good thing we didn't pick four movies because the scariest movie is next. Mae West in Sextet. Just as frightening as the lobster monster. What's Hands of Steel all about? Feel the grip of future world action. Okay, I'm feeling it. Feel. Falcon Crest's Daniel Green stars in the sci-fi stunner set in the bleak future world 
of 1997. Oh, that was a pretty bleak future world. You have no future. <laughs> Inspiring message from our dictator. I appreciate his, appreciate his honesty. You know? Nothing's going to happen, Inspector. Now get your men out of this whole thing. Oh, you know, it's the future because of Tube. Oh my god. <laughs> you know, it's just like Space Cop. <laughs> Silver dryer exhaust tubing. That That's worse than anything in Space Cop. <laughs> this is like an apartment. Yeah. What is happening? The Earth is bleached and battered by toxic gases and acid rain. The human race teeters on the verge of extinction. Only one lone scientist to give mankind hope. Paco Querek, green, is a super strong half man, half machine cyborg hired to terminate the scientist. He must outsmart and outbattle him in a true test of brawn. Uh, John Saxton, A Nightmare on Elm Street, co-stars as the ruthless programmer determined to finish the mission. His goal could mean utter disaster. When metal meshes with man, when the planet reels under ecological horror, the fate of the world may rest in... Hands of Steel. Hands of Steel! Nice one, Mike. That's, that's, that's a very well-written synopsis on the back. Yeah, I felt pretty good about that. Actually. Yeah. I am a perfect cyborg. <laughs> <laughs> I think, like, if you if you look at the back here, the guy on the back has no like hint of yeah. cyborginess. Yeah, and so. The question then remains is, will we ever see? My guess is that it's internal cyborgness. Sure. And and he's sort of like Terminator. Mm -hmm. And this is probably a rip off of that. Does it say the year? Um, and we never see that ever. Because that looks like someone's artwork. Yeah. That is not in the movie at all. 1986. OK, that's exactly perfect. Yeah, so you don't think we're going to, are we going to see any robotness besides like RoboVision? Obviously, we'll see RoboVision. We'll see RoboVision. Yeah. They might do some bad makeup effect where his skin's ripped and we see a little piece of metal, but we're not going to see that gauntlet on his arm with all these mechanisms because that's just some BS on the cover. Same with the Lobster Man. Yeah. The Lobster Man's going to be a shitty rubber suit, yeah. and it's not going to look as awesome as that. That's true. And then what was our first movie? I don't even remember. Alienator? Alienator. That's with the lady with the gun arm. Okay. That looks like crap, so that'll probably be in the movie. You think the gun arm's in the movie? Yeah. Yeah, it'll look like crap. All this is crap. That's it? Well, let's go watch the movie. If I start, then I won't have to talk about Hands of Steel. So. Oh my god. So everyone! We watched sci-fi movies that featured weird things on people's arms. Yes. Jay! <laughs> please tell us about Alienator. Uh, Alienator was directed by Fred Olin Ray, who is a schlock auteur. He's directed well over 200 movies, uh, including such classics as Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers and Evil Tunes and Dinosaur Island. So uh, he's got a lot under his belt. Lots of sci-fi classics. Classics. Uh, An Alienator <laughs> uh, starts, there's a pre-credit sequence, which I think if the movie ended after that pre-credit sequence, it would probably be the best movie we've watched on Best of the Worst. <laughs> it's so great. Well, I guess we'll get into details of that. But basically, this guy is a prisoner on some weird moon base, uh, and then he escapes during the credits. We don't actually see him escape. We see him wandering around the facility, which is just some factory somewhere, uh, similar to Space Mutiny. And uh, I guess he gets into a pod and flies to Earth, but we don't see that. We, we just cut to credits. Yeah, so that opening credit sequence, we're introduced to Jan Michael Vincent, who 
apparently had a drinking problem, right, Rich? He, he was the, the star of Airwolf, okay. the 1980s super helicopter <laughs> program. <laughs> that And that was shitballed after three seasons. And then he became a horrible alcoholic and ended up in Alienator. When I want your interpretation, Tara, I'll ask for that guy, he sounds really angry to be in this movie. He sounds liquored up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you have you seen a picture of this man lately? Oh, he's he's, he's ready for the tombstone. Oh, he he looks like hell warmed over. <laughs> he looks like he looks like Is the that homeless like man. Old man expression. Like hell <laughs> warmed over. Jen, you, hell did you just warm? make up that expression? No. Is that PJ Souls? Wow. Look at that hook pattern. Oh my god! Never saw that before. Yeah. This is Joe Pilato. Yeah, this opening is a star-studded affair because we've got Airwolf, we've got Joe Pilato, uh, we have PJ Souls from Halloween, uh, looking very foxy in her uh, prison-issued uniform. She's so high-ranking that th she has this much cleavage showing. Yeah. Very fun outfit. And also, James Doohan is in it as a as like a spiritual leader or something? He's As a wizard there. of some sort. And he turns out to be an evil Jedi in the end. Spoilers. Oh my god, you just gave away the ending of the movie. Well, we should say right up front, there's going to be lots of spoilers for this one because there's lots of twists and turns. We have plans to see Alienator anytime <laughs> soon. Skip ahead. Yeah. Prepare the first execution. That'd be prisoner 485. Do it. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, we have to talk about this. So, uh, our, our guy, what was his name? Cole? Cole. Cole yeah. Slaw. Cole Slaw. Cole uh, escapes from his cell, uh, which is a storage unit somewhere. Yeah, with cardboard walls. With cardboard it's, it's, walls. It's, it's shown that he knows how to pick the lock yeah. by reaching around and picking a lock, because this is a space prison. Yeah. It's very futuristic. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, but in the meantime, he's, he's collecting giant bugs in a paper bag. And his big bug plan was after he accommodated somebody else's gun and was shooting people, instead of shooting a, a, a guard in the back, he just walks up behind them and he shoves bugs in his face. Oh, the bag of bugs that uh, used the bag of bugs instead of the space gun. Oh, gross. That's awesome. If I was sitting in a jail for however long he was, and I knew that these bugs did horrible things to your face, yeah. I would just be waiting for the opportunity to use them on a guard. <laughs> sure. Um, Coleslaw lands on Earth. Oh, they, the, the, the teenagers hit him with their RV. So they, yeah, they hit Col those teenagers hit Coleslaw with the car, mm -hmm. and then they take him to Warden Ward's cabin. Yeah. Warden Ward. A lot of clever names. The rest of the movie pretty much takes place there. Is this decaf? Nope. Oh, thank you, God. I need a serious caffeine fix. Anybody else? I'll take a cup, please. <laughs> this is a riveting Ouch. coffee scene. <laughs> <laughs> the alienator shows up because the alienator is hunting Cole, uh, and then the alienator wanders around the woods. The, the alienator is set up as this ultimate bounty hunter, huntress, cyborg death machine. He walks around the woods in high heels. In, a, in high heel, floppy boots, and a metal thong. Mm -hmm. Also some very strange breastplates. Yes. To be fair, that is exactly where I would want armor plating because every bullet seemed to hit her right there. <laughs> touche, touche. <laughs> uh, and we, we get to uh, the alienator's first kill. Oh, yes. Which is Dr. Burnham. Yeah, his ca actual character name is something like Burnside or Burn something, which is ironic. I think it's Burnside. Yeah. Okay, Burnside. But the first time we see him, he's just got a giant bottle of scotch or whiskey or something. Not whiskey, scotch or vodka. He's drinking alcohol. He's drinking a lot, and I was, I was thinking, why isn't this Cameron Mitchell? That's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah. So then he gets out of the car on his way to visit the teens at the cabin, and the alienator just shoots him, and we discover that the uh, alienator's arm ray shoots a laser beam that makes you glow green, and in this particular case, the green turns into flames.
What? What a horribly inefficient weapon. Yeah. <laughs> it fires a green laser that makes your whole... Oh! Holy shit! But, but Rich, you said she destroys everything in her path, and that's very accurate for the doctor who comes out and says, I'm just the doctor. Mm -hmm. But uh, she, her computer programming says that uh, some deer is not a threat. Yeah. And then she pets the deer. They end up at a new cabin, which is the home of the best character in the movie, who we're just gonna call Grandpa, because he's a grandpa. Colonel, Colonel Grandpa. Grandpa. Colonel Grandpa. Uh, this uh, female alien, you say she's packing some kind of a laser weapon? Yeah, she blew the shit out of Mr. Game Warden's cabin. Huh. Ruskies have an operational laser. Let the Vietnamese use it on the border incident with the Red Chinese. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Grandpa, have you taken your medicine today? <laughs> But he's he's a, a crusty old John Wayne, uh, uh, kill em all kind of grandpa. Yes. And he is by far the best character. But he's got so much backstory they just kind of like hint at. <laughs> like he, he picks up his AK-47, this is my AK-47. This is an AK-47. I took it off an NVA officer after it sliced up an entire squad. My squad. And his solution, the whole movie, the, the uh, Cole has been like, ah. <laughs> How long have they been huddled together like that? Just waiting. Just waiting. And then his solution is just point a gun at point blank range and just shoot the thing off. And it works! <laughs> it's going off! He says that collar's some kind of a tracking device. It says it won't come off. It won't, huh? Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> That yeah. moment defined his character 100%. because we knew at that moment Grandpa is, he's got the skill yes. he's, and he's got the confidence. Yes. He's absolutely always right. Before Grandpa shows up, our heroes just wander around the woods, the whole movie running from this thing and people yep. keep dying. But when they show up at Grandpa's, <laughs> shit gets done. He's, he's not always right. He did not believe in the chicken wire net. To no, be no, fair. no. Well, he said, he said, you got an idea? Let me hear it. You got an idea? Let's hear it. She sure. was open to it. He was open to but it. But he wanted to use his mind first, which is <laughs> completely makes sense. Yeah. If I'm going to go with the chicken wire versus a mine, yeah. I'm going with the mine. I'm yes. going with the explosive. Yes. Right. Yeah. Hell, give it a try. But my money's on this, baby. First, his mind didn't even go off. Right. Yeah. It's like she stepped on it, it's like, yeah, it's fine. I did that where you are with What's that gibberish? <laughs> so Grandpa just shot the mine. <laughs> First rule, never surrender your weapons. Second rule, blow the hell out of your enemy before they can do it to you. Yeah! yeah! <laughs> Coleslaw, who started off the movie as an evil guy, ended the movie as an evil guy. Mm. That's right, that's right. D to apparently what was supposed to be a shock to us. I, I don't think we were supposed to think he was an evil guy throughout the movie. He was supposed to be the good guy, and then it turns out Alienator is actually there because he is a bad guy. I think guy. we were supposed to think he was the persecuted rebel who was fighting yes. the evil space. That's what we were supposed to think, but we never got a sense that that was the case. There was no setup for that. Yeah. And so at the end of the movie, he sucks the essence of dumb jock mm -hmm. and transforms into dumb jock um, and then everyone believes that he is the dumb jock and so instead of... And he's got of, the perfect cover. He's got the perfect cover and instead of making a clean getaway he decides he wants to rape someone. What I had in mind a little late. I said leave me alone Rick. I mean it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and kill everybody else. <laughs> yeah. 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 Alienator shows up and hacks his head off with a, with an axe. That she got great. from somewhere. Somewhere. Well, it's, well, it's, a, it's a cabin. It's, it's a cabin. A, it's a, there could be an axe somewhere around. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh. Oh! Oh! oh. oh. Yay! But, the, but when it says the head is decapitated, it makes him turn back into Cole. The head's, you know, it's Cole's head on the ground for some reason. I feel like we say for some reason a lot on Best of the Worst. Because it's an accurate description. <laughs> These movies don't 
explain things well. No, no, we have to we have to figure a lot of things out for ourselves. Like when when bitchy girl she like flees in terror. Oh yeah. And then for some reason she attacks the alienator with a crossbow. With a crossbow that luckily is just in the front seat of this <laughs> truck. <laughs> oh, did it hit her? I mean. <laughs> 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 she's a great, she's a great shot. Yeah. I'll give her that much. Yeah. And then the movie ends with a lightsaber duel. It turns out that James Doohan is actually the father of Cole, and he's pissed. He was, he's been like a like a double crosser all along. He tried to, to fiddle with a padlock at some point. <laughs> yeah, I guess the sabotage <laughs> the space on the, on the on the space yeah. prison yeah. that has a padlock. <laughs> so yeah, the, uh, James Doohan has a lightsaber. Uh, our heroes take the lightsaber and shove it through him, <laughs> all the way through him, <laughs> to the point where their hand comes out his back, yeah. and it's awesome. <laughs> What I would have enjoyed is if she, her little computer thing said non, non-threatening to the deer, and then when she was petting the deer, just went, ah! it's like, it's like, oh, fuck! Because, like, you know, that happens. Deer, deer are a wild animal. They, sure, yeah, they're, so they're fucking they crazy. snap and start kicking in the yeah. face and run away, and then she's like, oh, fuck. And you go ahead a wino with your, with your car. Yeah, because they're not real people. As long as they've, they've drank some wine that day. Yeah. Then the, the, more than 12 ounces, you're considered a wino. Okay. That's the law. Oh, okay, that's the law. What's this shit all over his face? See a wino or something? Well, it would certainly be fortunate for us if he was. Wow, we've learned a lot from Alienator. It's really great. Yeah. I great. feel good about me now. And I want to know where Jan Michael Vincent gets his hairspray. <laughs> Army that's surplus stores. Yeah. Or Menards, Home Depot. That's like, rubber cement. Yeah, exactly. It's like <laughs> beautiful. It's in case he gets hit in the head with a hammer. From, a, from an assassin, you know? Yeah. Some, someone sneaks up on him, boom, and the hammerhead breaks off. Yeah. Is this a stealth helmet? You, you hit my hair. <laughs> So, Jay, would you recommend an Alienator? But we're not on half in the bag. That's not how this oh, works. Shit. That's not how this show works. <laughs> this ought to make everyone feel more comfortable. So, the next movie. Alien from the Deep. Don't give it to me. I'm so glad that you already had me do Alienator. <laughs> <laughs> Alien from the Deep, Italian masterpiece, sci-fi, a cinema. Yeah. Rich, oh, <laughs> oh, tell us all about <laughs> Alien from the Deep. Italian movie is about some Greenpeace people who go to investigate a nuclear power waste disposal where they put nuclear waste into a giant volcano where the nuclear waste incinerates and then she meets up with a man who collects snakes and then they wander around in the woods while dodging gunfires from the evil henchmen from the nuclear power plant people until they run into a giant crab. But wait, why did the giant nuclear, how did the giant nuclear crab get there? Do you remember? I don't know. <laughs> There's something about thro throwing barrels of toxic waste into a volcano. Yeah. Created energy beams that went up into space. space yeah. Which either attracted an alien spacecraft or shot it down. I think it attracted it. Okay. And, then and it, that's why it went specifically to that location. And then it crashed under the water. Yeah, Colonel, that goddamn flaming thing fell right into the lake. And then, then its giant crab arm came up into the caves and was snapping at people. Yeah. So the movie starts with with shirtless man and flat butt McGee <laughs> in the bottom of the boat. I only call her flat butt McGee because like the she boat. Has flat butt. Well, and the boat captain was like, "Ooh, damn girl!" But she just had a flat butt. Like, if, if I were that woman, yeah. I would never sleep in my underwear around three skeevy men. Yeah. 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 Apparently, that's not underwear though, as we discover throughout the movie, because like she spends a good chunk of the movie just wearing that. She ends up in her underwear a lot, but she does put on those extremely baggy wrapper pants. Yeah, she puts on the MC Hammer pants. Yes. <laughs> where the where the crotch goes down to her knees. <laughs> They're, they're giant, like, stonewashed mom jeans, yeah. basically. Yeah. They're, they're beyond mom jeans. They're like single lesbian grandma jeans. Either, that's... <laughs> that's neither here nor there, though, Rich. The movie's not about her butt. <laughs> no. It kind of is. As it turns out, they're environmental activists. Yeah. 
hoping to film the evil doings on this volcano island. I'm convinced that the whole his whole motivation for this is that he just wants to impress her with his camcorder. Well, he's clearly in the friend zone. Yeah. yeah. And then she doesn't even care when he throws himself off a cliff <laughs> because he's infected with toxic goo. He, <laughs> he sacrificed himself to save her, and she's like, fuck that guy. Yeah, whatever. This new guy has fashionable stubble. Look, look, the toxic goo doesn't come into play till like an hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> Nothing comes into play until an hour and 90, 20 minutes. Ninety percent of the movie, there are no aliens yeah. or alien crabs or goo or anything yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the first time they go in, he's taking video. Um, so they have evidence to show of like how bad these people are. They're throwing toxic waste into this volcano. Um, they get caught. They have to try and run away. So he hides the tape. Mm -hmm. And that becomes a major plot point. But Cameron gets caught, and then she runs out into the woods, and they start trying to kill her with machine guns. Leave it at me! I'll see you later! And then she runs into the snake man <laughs> with the creepy eyes. <laughs> Almost ready. So am I. <laughs> he said almost ready, and I swear to God, I thought he was going to take his pants that, off. That's what it looked like he was about to do, yeah. We're, we're at the Tilty school bus filled with okay, snakes. Okay, so yeah, we have Snake Man, uh, who charms girl. Snake charms girl? He snake charms girl. They go back for the second time into the compound, and they rescue Friend Zone Man. Yeah, okay, talk to you later. Also, couldn't wait till he hung up the phone. He, he was just saying, talk to you later. <laughs> he was talking to his wife. Now he's dead. His wife got to hear him die. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's gotten, like, beat up and thrown in jail because he's been dragged on this quest by a woman he likes. Yes. And then she comes to rescue him with a handsome man she just met. <laughs> Cameraman probably wants to die at this point. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't tell them where the videotape is that they were very concerned about. Um, they don't know where that is, and they escape again. And then when they're in the caves, that's when the claw monster finally shows up. Please! Please! entertaining. It's like the only thing in the movie that's not a miniature. Yeah. It's like a full-size giant fucking crab claw. <laughs> and and awkwardly swinging around the cave. But as apparently as opposed to just having a giant evil claw, it's also covered in like mutagen acid. Yeah. Because it it melts friend zone guy's arm and then it melts snake man's shotgun. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like it just melts the shotgun. Which is when he thinks to just start throwing bullets at it. <laughs> the acid just makes the bullets go off. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, be I believe the point of this was that Friend Zone Man realizes he has a, a, an acidic mutagen on his arm and that he's in, infectious. Well, he wakes up and his arm is just pointed at the woman, like it's trying to get the woman, just his yeah. arm. Yeah, and it has a pulse to it, yeah, like a heartbeat. Yeah, it's like pulsating, the hand is pulsating. So he realizes, even though he's just a camera guy, <laughs> that the alien is taking control of him and then he throws himself yeah. off a cliff. Yeah, in the he... ultimate friend zone maneuver, he sacrifices himself <laughs> to save her and she does not give she a fuck. She instantly yeah. cuddles with the snake hunter man. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's so terrible. No, we'd better concentrate on saving our own lives. That's all that matters. The worst part about getting infected by this mutagen is that uh, when you're in the midst of death, you turn into a dummy. <laughs> He, he was in the transformation process. He was in the transformation, yeah, and it, and it happened as he was falling. It's like becoming He's a zombie. He's full on dummy. Oh yeah, we didn't mention that. The scientist of this movie is the old man from your Hunter from the Future. Grandpa number two. Grandpa number two. All these movies have there, grandpas. There's a theme of grandpas of diminishing effectiveness. Yes. <laughs> throughout these movies. <laughs> That's true. 
these movies have several interconnecting pieces, and one of them is Grandpa. No, no theme between all three other than bad, <laughs> but there, yeah, there are similar themes between two. Yeah. yeah snakes, grandpas, helicopters. Well, your grandpa, he examines the little monster, and then he decides he's gonna make like a gun that sucks hydrogen out of things. Because he figured this out somehow. <laughs> It looked like a flamethrower. It looked it like a flamethrower, flame and Jack called it that it's just going to be a flamethrower. Yeah, just a flamethrower, yeah. 100%. So, uh, uh, friend is dead. Friend is dead. And they decide to go back to the compound again. Because now that the crap monster is attacking people, and that the waste disposal facility is in flames, it's very important to get that incriminating footage so they can have the flaming waste disposal facility shut down. Yes, yeah, the fo yeah, the place that is no longer active, that has been completely destroyed. Let's take these guys down. Just want to piss on the ashes, that's yeah. fine. Okay, so they go back to get that, and the whole place is being attacked by the crab monster now. This happens very suddenly, where it's like, oh, I guess it's there now. Mm -hmm. Shit has hit the fan and uh, she gets splashed with goop she does and that's like the you have goo on your shirt you know you better get into you the better take a shower you better get into the wet t-shirt machine <laughs> <laughs> and then it becomes it's despicable <laughs> <laughs> Look, there was an italian man saying i want to see boobies <laughs> come on don't take off your shirt so the incredibly important tape the hippie gives it up which you know so poof all that plot is gone yeah uh, and throws Charles, it into the volcano. Charles Napier throws it into the volcano, right? And you realize all this was pointless. But there are still witnesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. But he lets them go for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a man who has killed his own men for doing nothing worse than falling in a hole. <laughs> Great. What did he say? God damn you, Colonel! <laughs> well, this is, see, this is the sliding scale of grandpa effectiveness, right? Yeah. Colonel Grandpa saves the day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then Colonel Grandpa runs out with his hydrogen. Not Colonel Grandpa. Grandpa. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Colonel Scientist saves the day. Colonel with... Grandpa. Colonel Scientist. Oh, God. Colonel Grandpa saves the day with good old American machine guns that were made in Russia. And then Grandpa Yor runs in to save the day with a hydrogen flamethrower, falls down and dies. <laughs> Instantly. Well, immediately. immediately. Well, no, 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 he doesn't die when he falls down, he gets stepped on. He gets squashed. He, he gets tries squished. to use the flamethrower but falls over. Immediately when he shows up, I'm here to help! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> but he gets points for partial effectiveness because he invented he invent the, yes. the hydrogen this flamethrower. Is, this is where we get the sliding scale of grandpa effectiveness. Yes. So the snake squeezer takes the hydrogen flamethrower, mm -hmm. which is just a real flamethrower, <laughs> and he starts burning the giant monster's face until his helmet explodes. We see that he has an alien face, and then he burns his alien face and he dies. <laughs> What we should mention is they built a full-size giant monster for this. He, he, it's like a giant oversized marionette. Um, and it's impressive, it's pretty cool. It's, it's impressive except for when it stands up and like a crane is clearly pulling up a wet noodle. It looks like, <laughs> <laughs> it looks like this. But they tried. Yes, they tried. yes. We weren't expecting to see that much of the, because earlier in the movie you see the claw and that's it. We were like, we're never going to see this full thing. It's fascinating. Not only do they have it, but it's, it seems to be in full scale. Yeah, yes. yeah. To be fair, it was made out of black plastic tubes. That's fine. Which, which is, I guess, another oh, connecting Oh, black point. plastic tubes. Black, black yeah, that tubes, comes into yeah. play later. Add that to the connection list. Yeah, black we'll, we'll make a master list of all the connections. All the things that connect It'll to be movies. like, like, you know, the three lines. Yeah, and then these two, these two, these two, these two. These a two. cable package that shows the dots on what, <laughs> what, what, which, what's on which one. Um, we're going to go with the platinum plan. We want all the shit <laughs> stuff in all the movies. <laughs> <laughs> They died of cancer three years later. <laughs> <laughs> and they say something like, what if this was just a warning? What if it was just a warning? What? 
Oh yeah, they talk yes. about that. This is a warning. Uh, I guess that's a setup for a sequel. The aliens don't want us throwing toxic waste in volcanoes anymore. Yeah. yeah. Because it sends up a space laser. <laughs> don't do that. And a giant puppet from outer space won't crash into the ocean. Yeah. Won't crab you up. Won't crab attack you with crab claws with with toxic mutagen on them. <laughs> it's a very important lesson that yeah. we all must learn. These simple morality tales yeah. just retold by the Italians. <laughs> You fucking... Hands of Steel, the third of our sci-fi movies with a thing on their arm. Yes. Not so much sci-fi, a little more action schlocky, Mike. You get the honor. Well, from the fine folks at Lightning Video, <laughs> <laughs> comes Hands of Steel, starring Tim Tebow as man. And action man. As action man. Robot action man. Uh, uh, Tim Tebow stars as Paco Querak. Uh, he is apparently a cyborg. Uh, he has yep. machine parts underneath his body. Yes. And uh, a, a former soldier who is brainwashed into becoming an assassin for an evil corporation. Yep. They want to kill a blind guy in a wheelchair who lives in a future apartment made of cardboard and tubes <laughs> with a Chinese man and a lady. How, how do you know it's in the future? Well, there are tubes everywhere. Yeah, yeah. that's the big thing. The, this, this future is full of tubes. There, it's an it's a, it's a environmental post-apocalypse with, with like toxins in the air, acid rain, blah, 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 all that stuff. Yeah. Paco uh, Aquaric rents an apartment in the same building that's housing this leader, uh, who's, who's an environmentalist revolutionary guy, who has, puts up signs everywhere that says, you have no future. Yes. Which I'm not sure, uh, maybe he, he's meaning it literally, like, follow me because you have no future. That's gotta be it, because he's not painted as being a bad guy, he's painted as being a good guy, he's yeah. an environmentalist. Yeah. And in our sliding scale of grandpa effectiveness, he, his spleen is ruptured in the second scene of the movie and he's never heard from again. Go on. What are you waiting for? Get it over with. <laughs> you just punched him in the nuts yeah. really hard? <laughs> what? Yes, we realized that, but we were hoping that you might recall some sensation before you lost consciousness. Even a vague impression might be helpful. I felt the sensation of getting punched in the balls. <laughs> it wasn't especially large, but it felt hard. <laughs> he, he, he fucked his point. <laughs> and then uh, two FBI agents later determined that it was a fist that punched him by computer analysis. The computer figured it out. <laughs> Ugh. Can I just say that you are horrible at synopsises? Well. <laughs> oh, this is depressing. Those are actual homeless. This is just, yeah, you can tell. It's just them um, guerrilla style getting these shots. Well, I think that footage of homeless men, they just gave Jan Michael Vincent a camera and they told him to film his friends. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Be back at 3.30. Don't run into the tube. <laughs> <laughs> the movie starts off at like it's establishing like environmental themes, like we're in danger in the future, there is no the whole the no there is no future banners, the environmental scientist who gets injured, and then you get the acid rain. And then the movie forgets about all of that and it turns into over the top with a cyborg. Watch out! All right, a bar fight. Yay, a bar fight! It's like you want it, Rich. Oh. <laughs> yeah. His, his moves are so weird. Yeah, I don't know if this, is this is an actual robot. style of some sort? Or? No, no. This is a movie. He just right. punched it and nothing. He, he punched the air. Finally, after 45 minutes, the movie decides to give us information. Yeah. We do understand that the old man has a, a, a talking type <laughs> that he speaks into and shoots a laser beam yeah. to a dot matrix printer, yes. which prints out what he, what he says. And in a region which once 
had the lowest pollution level of the continental United States. That's the guy in the poster. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. What? 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 He's using a voice thing to type with. Because, well, it's the future. It they is have, the future. They have dot matrix printers all over the place in the future. Dot matrix printers uh, and tubes. <laughs> and that's all they have in the future. My question is, did they really need to send a, a robotic, muscle-bound cyborg to assassinate a crippled, blind, elderly man? <laughs> <laughs> like was was that was that what they call overkill? Yeah, yeah. that's yeah, yeah, a little over the top. Oh, oh! You got the balls for it, Mantle. But can we, can we talk about Raul for a minute here. The, the, the arm wrestling hotshot in the arm wrestling bar who picks a fight with a man whose arms are twice his size, <laughs> <laughs> and he's very cocky about it. Too. Cocky um, and juvenile. Yes. He, he sends him a roll of toilet paper <laughs> with a threatening message written on the toilet paper. Clean your ass with this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. And then he wants to challenge him to an arm wrestling fight. And then, and then Action Man responds by ripping off a piece of marble and throwing it at him. And Raul is still confident he's going to easily win in a contest of strength. Yes. Win. Now. In the mid 80s, they started hiring stuntmen as their lead actors. Yes. Or martial arts or guys. Martial arts. Errol Flynn did his own stunts. Most. No one gets your old man references. Yeah. That man gets sword fight, goddammit. <laughs> well, there's our fourth grandpa right here. I know this because I've seen The Rocketeer, which also makes me an old man. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Both of these things are true. So the so the, the like, Rock a Who? <laughs> I, I get it. A, that was a reference to the it. movie. That was a reference in there. He just put <laughs> 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 <It's> like, <laughs> What? <laughs> I don't need this anymore. He doesn't need to drive anywhere ever again. These guys these Tim Tebow characters, or whoever this guy's Paco. name is, Paco, whatever his real name is, I don't know. <laughs> so green something? Green. Some, uh, these guys are a dime a dozen, and this guy's You just, can find buff guys. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> In LA, you can find buff guys. How, how do you know that? I'm not saying anything. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, you seem to know a lot about buff guys in LA. Listen, I've and gone to Jack LA. Jack the obvious joke. <laughs> One of us had to. I take no shame in that. <laughs> so, where can we find these buff guys in LA? <laughs> oh, let me tell you. There's several, several underpasses. <laughs> that was good. One. I don't know. I, like that. I don't know. It's a little bar called the Manhole. <laughs> We need to talk about, okay. after Raul loses the uh, 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 arm wrestling match, yeah. he devises a plan to get even with Cyborg Man, mm -hmm. which uh, relies on lots and lots of coincidences that he could not <laughs> anticipate. And allows those backstabbing Native Americans to Yeah, yeah, there's, there's a Native American couple that calls to the diner. They want to get back for all those smallpox blankets that Jay gave them. <laughs> oh, not you. Your ancestors. My ancestors. Okay. I do have some Native American in me, actually. That's only when you're at the manhole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I was looking, I was looking to see if that I was like, where are you? <laughs> it's easy to yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, A Native American couple calls the hotel slash bar. Apparently the woman that owns that place is also in charge of auto accidents? Yes. <laughs> she has a the only tow truck in town. Yeah, apparently she has a tow truck, and so they call her mm -hmm. to say, hey, this tr uh, car rolled off a cliff. Uh, can you come take care of it? it it's, it's dangerously poised on the edge of a cliff, and, and there's my children inside. inside. And my kids are inside, okay. The kids are still inside. So that happens. 
a cyborg man says, I'll go take care of it. I don't know why he says this, but he does. And she doesn't even bother to go with. And she just says, yeah, okay. You think she'd want to go with. So he drives the tow truck out and it turns out it's all a ruse and it's Raul and his, and his buddies. Um, and they knew that Cyborg Man was going to show up. They knew that Cyborg Man was going to wrap the tow truck around his waist and climb down the cliff. Well, it, he could have just easily carried it down there. He could, you know, he had to hook it onto himself yeah, because that's no what the movie required to happen for him to get uh, dragged behind as Raul they, drove the tow they truck. They drag him and then they string him upside down. Yeah, although we don't see how that yeah. happens because he has hands of steel. Yes, yes. But somehow, in a magical edit, he's suddenly tied up. So then eventually, the premise of the movie catches back up with the movie. Oh, that's right. It decides that things have to happen to form a story. Right, and the original... The, the people who set Cyborg Man loose on Elderly Man are now looking for Cyborg because he didn't kill Elderly Man. They could have just let him be. That was an option. But uh, yeah, 100%. He wouldn't have known any different. He wouldn't have known any different, uh, and of course- But they find him with their Atari technology. <laughs> Until last night. Hold on, I have my atari scope here. <laughs> There's which, a little atari which is, man. Which is clearly able to detect the difference between a man and a woman. Yeah. Because the woman shows up as a pink Atari person, <laughs> and the man shows up as a blue Atari person. <laughs> But like, there's no like, it, it doesn't say like how far they are from the device or each other. It's just like there is a man and a woman in there, yeah. which is stuff they already knew from Manuel. Yeah. Look, the device's only purpose is to determine gender. <laughs> That's all it does. How many men and women are it's, in this building? It's the tranny tracker 5,000. <laughs> what? <laughs> that doesn't even make any sense. So the future people show up and the plan is set into action that they're going to capture Man of Steel hands. Yes. And as it turns out, Daryl Hannah is a cyborg and she's the most perfect cyborg because she has a little metal nail on her finger. <laughs> yeah, which when he, they shoot her hand yes. and a finger blows off and it looks like, like Play-Doh. And we're like, what, what is this? <laughs> Did they just shoot off her Play-Doh finger? And then we realized, oh, she's supposed to be a cyborg. I am a perfect cyborg. He pulls her fucking head off. Oh! oh yay! Nice. Go Paco. And that's the second time this movie and this movie both have uh, decapitated heads, which is clearly... Oh yeah, this one this is in that movie. Yeah, that's the um, connection. Decapitated heads, which is just someone laying there and they put ground around them, <laughs> yes. around the head. The unfortunate part about the decapitation of the female robot mm -hmm. is that it sets up that our man, Hands of Steel, loves to rip heads off and then when he's given the opportunity to rip someone's head off he just kind of awkwardly stops and yeah. it's his, his main adversary raul who's been nothing but a horrible dick to him and he could have ripped his fucking head off yep. but he, he it's, it's questionable whether or not he even killed raul that's true or, or just made him pass out mm -hmm. from yep. like, like a yep. chokehold or something he's grabbing his head and then he just kind of dies yeah yeah use your fist of steel Rip his head off! Rip his fucking head off! He's not going to. That would be so awesome if he did. Is he just crushing his head? Oh. Oh. The, the most badass thing to happen in this movie, though, is when the uh, the there's like henchmen that are at the end with with motorcycle helmets on, oh, yeah. and he punches through the motorcycle helmet into yes. the guy's eyes, and there's like just a bloody mess in his yeah. face. <laughs> See, he's fine. He's wearing a helmet. Oh, oh. Now he's less fine. Oh. The, the, the bad guys, they know they're, they're dealing with somebody, somebody tough, so they go to the helicopter. They dig out the, the big laser, the, the yeah. shoulder the, giant. The BFG. Cannon. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's Worf's purple space bazooka. It was the, it was the blue space bazooka. It's blue, yeah. But it's not really much of a bazooka. It just shoots out little, like, Atari pellets <laughs> that, that bounce off the wall. Yeah. <laughs> They set off a small smoke bomb. They shoot it at bomb. nothing for no reason. They, yeah, they just, well, they got to show off the effect because nobody actually kills anybody with the gun in the movie. Yeah, yeah. So they need to establish that it's a big badass laser by having it shoot out an ineffective blue beam. How does he kill the main bad guy? 
first, they, first they set it up like something clever is gonna happen because Action Man takes this bazooka, yeah. and then he invites the the bad guy down to see him, and the oh, gun's just yeah. sitting there. And you think there's some kind of like booby trap that's gonna happen, something clever. But we should know better than to think this man could even act clever. <laughs> so he just lets the bad guy pick up the pick space up the bazooka gun, and yeah. shoot at him. It doesn't do anything. And, and then, then he, he picks just... him up by his neck. He yeah. punches him, he rips his heart out. Oh, yeah. He says, yes. I, need a heart. He says yeah. I have a heart now or yeah. something. The only way to control a man is with his through his heart. Yeah. yeah. So then he his, punches his into brain. his chest, and we are waiting for him to pull out the heart, and you see it beating, and then it dies, and that didn't happen. No. If if we had seen a gory heart removal, right. this would be another similarity of punching through someone's body. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. But I suppose either way, he, pun he still punches through There the is body. a similarity so of there is punching similarity. through bodies. Right. Yeah. That's another connection. And and uh, Alien from the Deep also, it had a giant lifeless puppet. And this one also had a giant lifeless <laughs> puppet. It was, it was our main actor, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Maximum level! <laughs> so now is the time. Yes. We need to figure out which is the best of the worst. Hands of steel. <laughs> really? No, the best of the worst. Oh, the best of the worst? Best We're doing. Oh my god. Uh, Don't jump the gun. I jumped the gun. That's my fault. We picked best of the worst first. Yeah. yeah. All, right, all right, all right. We've been here this before. This is a convoluted process, but we'll. That makes no sense. It makes no sense. And there are no so your uh, favorite, clear rules. Your fa these three my films are automatically terrible. Yes. Your best of the worst would be. Okay, okay. Here's a good here's, here's my opinion. None of them stand out. I'm gonna say Alien from the Deep is slightly more impressive because the neat miniatures and uh, the giant monster at the end. And this is not a terrible generic action story. It's kind of terrible. <laughs> but it's not awful. Well, it's kind of awful. <laughs> it's not as bad as the Alienator, and it's definitely not as bad as Hands of Steel, so I'm going with Alien from the Deep. <laughs> All right. Okay, Hands of Steel, terrible. Alien from the Deep, uh, fun, more impressive than I was expecting. Mm -hmm. it, it felt like your, like an Italian movie that was filmed in a factory, yeah. because they had a factory. But the, it was impressive, miniatures, explosions, the big giant alien, blah, 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 blah. Very impressive. Uh, my pick for best of the worst is Alienator, because it had that Don Dohler charm. And uh, this, I was a, a, not a little bored, a lot bored during most of the movie. Yeah. And Alienator, um, I mean, they kept going from cabin to cabin. <laughs> and uh, it, had, it, it had grandpa, mm -hmm. and it had a terrible sci-fi costume on the lady, and it was just complete shit. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 like I said, the Don Dohler charm. Charming shit. Charming shit, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and agree with you that Alienator is my pick for best of the worst because it seems like a movie that I could make <laughs> in a weekend. Like it seems like a, a, all the little miniatures were just crappy enough where it's like I could make that ship and film that. All the sequences were just dumb enough where it, it, it seems like a really accessible movie for a filmmaker. <laughs> <laughs> Alienator for me. All right. Uh, for me, Best of the Worst is also Alienator. That to me felt like the most classic example of a shitty, fun B-movie. It has some slow moments, but um, the spaceship stuff was great. The, the Tegan costume was great. The space prison, uh, the appearances by PJ Souls and Joe Pilato, like everything about it, it's like classic mid-90s B-movie. That, that, that's it, it's all an Alienator. All so right. by vote of three to four, Alienator is our best that's of the Alienator worst. Alienator wins best of the worst. Oh, for sure. It's worth checking out. But now we get to a, an important part of the show, which is, do we feel like any of these- Hands of steel. Hands of steel. To be, Let's destroy Hands of Steel! Can I just, okay, you want to destroy it too, I right? do want to destroy it. I'm gonna be the dissenting opinion and say, I don't think any of them are worthy of destruction. Hands of Steel was off. I, you know, Alien from the Deep, yeah. kind of boring for the first half, gets really entertaining in the second half. Mm -hmm. Hands of Steel has enough things. I, I think you're right. Hands of Steel has enough things that I was entertained by. Yeah. 
No. It's, oh. it's, it has a lot of bad parts. It has a lot of dull moments, but the yeah. fact that it's it's supposed to be a Terminator knockoff and the middle 45 minutes of the movie are about arm wrestling, like that's great. I would say that Hands of Steel is the worst of the three, mm -hmm. but if we're if we're saying does it deserve destruction, I don't, I, think, I don't think so. There are a couple uh, fun moments and laugh moments that make it worth it. A, a total destruction is is worthy to a movie that you just absolutely hate. I couldn't hate this movie.